Good morning. My name is Robin Pigram, and I've been a member here at First Baptist Church since 2003. I'm married to my husband, Bill, and, um, and if the Lord sees fit, we will celebrate our 43rd wedding anniversary on June, on June the 28th. <laughs> that is an accomplishment, and it requires a lot of work, but we're not going into that. Um, <laughs> I've been retired from McGriff Insurance Services, formerly known as BB&T slash Truist, since December of 21. And they tell you before you re retire that you will be busier when you retire, and they are not lying. I am always busy. Um, I love working in my yard. I love planting flowers. I love cultivating vegetables. I love cooking what I harvest. Um, my favorite gifts have been lawnmowers and tillers. I am, I am an easy person to please. Um, in our spare time since I retired, when I'm not, when we're not busy at home or chasing grandchildren, um, we love to travel. Um, we have a motor home and we, our priority is um, one month in Cape Hatteras in October. And it's wonderful and I highly recommend it. Bill and I were blessed with two children, Hunter and Lauren. Hunter is currently employed with the Greensboro Fire Department. He's a deputy fire marshal. He's over inspections and planning. And he married Katie several years ago. And on December 18th, our miracle grandbaby, Hurley Campbell, was born. He also has two other miracle children, Tate and Gracie, who are 15-year-old twins. And they're both finishing up their freshman years at Burlington Christian Academy. Hunter's the reason why we are at First Baptist Church. He was attending here, and he was a member of Eddie Daniels' Sunday school class, and he talked about how loving and caring everyone here at this church is. Our daughter, Lauren, is married to Ryan McDowell, and they currently live in Charlotte. Lauren has accepted a position with Walt Disney Corporation and will be transferring to their construction department and will be in their transitioning to their to a home in Winter Garden, Florida, sometimes this summer. I was born in a loving and Christian home. My parents Larry and Joanne Carlson and Mama, as she's lovingly known, is sitting back there. And I grew up in a little country church on the east side of town, East Side Baptist. And I made a profession of faith at a very early age, and, and, and I, we attended there until we moved our membership here. There's many things that I remember growing up. I remember Sunday nights we had training union. Um, a lot of you senior people may remember training union. Um, I mean, Wednesday night prayer service, Sunday night preaching, Sunday, when the doors were open, we were there. Mom and Daddy says, you will be in church, and we were. I was an act team, I was a GA, and it was, and I remember going to Camp Mundo Vista on, um, a couple of summers. We didn't have, we were a small church, we didn't have many youth, but in order to cultivate, I went to, um, I attended Baptist Temple and participated with their youth and sang in their choir. Well, Bill and I got married and we had children and we were as active as we could as in, the, in the very small church. And Lauren was a GA, she was an acting, and Hunter was an RA. Um, I've always had a love of music and I, was, and I started taking piano when I was seven years old. And the opportunity arose and, and, and the need for a pianist and I accepted the position and I played for all church services and, and provided choir accompaniment. After we started attending here, mom and dad started coming and they became members. Today I am a mother, I am a daughter, 
And most blessed of all, I am a grandmother. And on any day, I am all three. I'm still, I am so blessed that I still have my mother. And I'm also doubly blessed that she is a godly woman. I can walk in her house at any time. And more times than not, her Bible is sitting beside her chair. There's scripture posted above the sink. And any time in any situation that I find myself in, I can, I can look to her and ask her for advice because she's experienced it herself. She will tell you that it is only by the grace of God and his alone and in her unwavering faith that has sustained her all these years. But I cannot keep up with her. She makes me tired. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, we have to help. And that's okay. That's fine. We, we don't help because we have to. We help because we love you. And more importantly, we help because we get to spend time with you. And time is precious. It gives... You want everything, you want to make everything that they do in their life so much easier. But, there, but you know, we have to weigh and we have to balance that I'm not overreaching and I'm not appearing to rob, rob her of her independence. It's a privilege to have a parent. It's not a burden. What I often do for her now is so small as to what she has done for me in the past, and she deserves all the love and respect due to her. But she learned by example, by her mother. My grandmother was also a godly woman. And I think, and I cannot remember how many years ago in the Dan Valley Association, they had a WMU Hall of Fame or, or Memorial or whatever. My, my grandmother, Lily Mae Ware, is in that book. She had poor health. Diabetes robbed her of her eyesight. But when she was buried, her Bible was in her casket. And then you have children. When you become a parent, you're always a parent. 24-7, and I don't care if we are 62 or if they are 40 or if they are 5, you're still the parent. It's the hardest and the most rewarding job I have ever had and continue to do. And I have made so many mistakes. But, but God, that's my favorite saying, is but God. My Christian faith in raising our children in church, it gave them stability, it gave them structure, and it gave them security. And most importantly, it gave them the knowledge of a loving God that he has plans for each of us. The most fun I have is being a grandmother. They're called grands for a reason. I didn't choose my name. I let my grandchildren choose my name, and I'm Nanny, and I'm hands-on. Tate and Gracie lived their first seven years around the corner from our house, and it was fun watching them grow up. They're 15 years old now and driving, which is scary. And any time that we spend with them now is quality time. Gracie loves to cook. She loves plants. She loves to read. She is just, she's the social butterfly of the family. She never meets a stranger. And Tate is direct opposite. He likes to keep to himself. Usually quality time with him involves a golf course and 18 holes of golf. But that's okay. But the most important thing with, their chip, with Tate and Gracie is they are both firmly grounded in their faith. They are not afraid to take a stand and profess their love for Christ. 
And then 15 years later, we have little Hurley. And he's named after my mom's dad, Hurley. And he's almost five years old. And he was, and he is an answer to so many prayers. Hurley is reminded daily by his mom every night before she puts him to bed how much he's loved and how much he's wanted. I thank God for this privilege of being a mother, a grandmother and a daughter. But I couldn't do it without my husband, Bill. He knows the word, yes, ma'am, real well. But no, he's my, he, um, he keeps me grounded. He makes my life so much easier. We make joint decisions. He says, I make them. No, they're joint. Don't let him tell you that. Um, but he, he, keeps, he, keeps me, he keeps me sane. And we were talking this morning in, in Sunday school about, we've been studying about prayer. And sometimes the words just don't come to you and you don't know what, what you want to say. Especially when those days get hard. You get the phone calls. The, I, we've had the phone call with the, for the wrecks. With, in Hunter's line of work, a lot of the fires that have happened, he has, to, he has to experience it firsthand. And it's, your days can be dark, but yet we have hope. And one of my favorite passages of scripture, Psalms 121. And I changed the pronouns a little bit so it would reflect what I want to ask the Lord. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let my foot slip. He who watches over me will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over me. The Lord is my shade at, at my right hand, and, he won't, and the sun will not harm me my day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep me from all harm, but he will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over my coming and my going, both now and forevermore. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Mallory Filio, and my family is over there. You've probably heard us a few times. Uh, we're kind of loud some mornings, uh, but Josh is my husband. We've been married almost 12 years, and Dexter is eight, and Pacey is four. And um, we're so honored to be part of the First Baptist family. We've uh, been members for a couple of years now, and we just appreciate all of you and, and just uh, the role that you've played in our lives so far. We're not from Reedsville, so we're relatively new to Reedsville as well. Uh, but we love it here, and we're just, again, we're honored to be a part of this church family. Um, and one of my degrees is in public speaking, and I'm pretty rusty, so I'm a little nervous, but I'm going to get through it. I usually am just talking about financial aid and scholarships to college students, but uh, this is different. So I, I am honored, Pastor Lance. I really appreciate you asking me to speak before the church family today. Um, so happy Mother's Day. There are just a few things I want to touch on um, on Mother's Day that spoke to my heart when I was praying about what to talk about. Uh, one thing I want to talk about today is my role as a mother and what that has come to mean to me. Another thing is something that God has shown me uh, since becoming a mother, and I hope that it provides encouragement to other moms as far as bringing children up in this world. And then I have a humble request for my church family. So um, as far as my role as a mother, and what that means to me. Uh, when I had Dexter eight years ago, it hit me really hard that one day I'm going to die. <laughs> 
And obviously that's something I knew, you know, God does number our days, but uh, just the heaviness of leaving my child on this earth one day uh, just really hit me and, and you know, um, it became so real. And Josh and I knew that we were gonna bring our kids up in a Christian home and, you know, go to church. And that's, you know, um, coming from a Christian home with wonderful parents, you know, we just, we knew that that was how we were gonna raise our family. But at the practical level, what did that mean? We weren't, I don't guess we were even really sure yet. Uh, so with that in mind, you know, I, I started realizing I have a really short while to get this right. And uh, what did that mean? So, you know, you hear in the, in the mom circles, oh, well, kids don't come with a manual. Well, they actually do. And, you know, it's the everything manual here. And so I just, you know, realized pretty quickly that that was what I was gonna have to consult in everything. And uh, that's, you know, a work in progress. Sometimes I, I really forget to go there first instead of uh, going there when my patience is really thin or when I'm feeling desperate. Um, but I began to realize the importance of framing my parenting decisions, and of course with Josh's gentle leadership as he wrestles with Pacey over there, um, from an eternal perspective with the ultimate goal of pointing the kids toward Christ. And so every moment with the kids, I try to remind myself, is an opportunity to disciple them and teach them about the Lord. And ultimately, um, it is my hope that others would see Christ in them and receive the gospel through them in some way. So I try to remember this in the challenging moments when my patience is wearing really thin, that my heart's desire is for my kids to spend eternity with Jesus. Um, and I'm still learning what that means. So, you know, I may be making it sound really good, like I know what I'm doing, but every day, it, it's such a learning process. Uh, but I've come to realize a few things so far. And one of those things is with the kids, I don't want them to avoid the, the difficult questions or the difficult topics. I want them to come to Josh and me and um, ask us about those things that they're going to be exposed to out in the world uh, because I want to sit them down and run those things through scripture. Uh, that is, you know, that's our standard in the, in the house. You, you've got to have a standard for your family. And what, what, is this, uh, what is the standard for our family? Well, it's the manual here that, uh, that God provided, the Bible. And um, so, you know, I want the kids to form that habit. And so we try to do that as, as often as possible. Um, I also want to welcome those moments when I mess up so that my kids can watch me pray for forgiveness and pray for wisdom. Um, try to ask for wisdom all the time because if I didn't, I would have none. That wisdom comes straight from God. And um, these things have become some of the most important parts of my agenda as a mom. Um, and I get it wrong more often than I get it right, but that's become a huge part of my sanctification. And I'm so thankful to God for that. So now that I've come to terms with leaving kids on this earth and uh, what my purpose is before that day comes, um, there is something about the world itself that's really hard to process, and that is how scary it is to have kids in this world. It's really scary. Um, but throughout Scripture, God tells us over and over again not to be afraid. It is such a frequent message in, in Scripture, so it has to mean something to us as, a mom, as moms. And also in John 16, 33, Jesus says, In this world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And I try to remember that in parenting too in this, in this day and age because, um, you know, he, he makes no bones about it. We are going to have trouble in this world. He doesn't promise us a good time or an easy time. Just because we're Christians, it doesn't mean we're going to have it easy. No, the opposite of that is what's going on right now. But he also tells us to take heart. And that is so encouraging to know that Jesus has already won. So remembering this brings me comfort when the world is coming at my family, coming at my kids, attacking them spiritually, trying to just knock them off the foundation that we're trying to build with them. So I also remember Psalm 127, 3 through 5, which has been really encouraging to me, and hopefully this is encouraging to you moms to remember this. Behold, and, and all parents, behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. So we want to raise children who will faithfully follow God and stand up for him, no matter what. 
And that is, that can be a scary thought, but I just try to remember to trust in him because I know that he has already won. So finally, I have a request of all of you. I would like to ask for your prayers. If you would just please pray for us as a family as we continue bringing up Dexter and Pacey, that we always remember to obey and glorify God during this process. We are always learning. And uh, please know that we pray for you as our church family as well. And I want to thank those who have uh, loved on our kids and laughed with them and spend time with them and teach them. You're priceless to us. And I also want to thank you to um, thank the fellow moms who I have been able to form friendships with in this church um, or those who are practically mothers in some way for just giving me encouragement and Christ-like inspiration. You just have no idea how you have touched me. It helps me daily in my journey as a mother. So uh, thank you so much and happy Mother's Day. Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here today, those that have been like mothers to so many and to those that have gone before us that we're missing greatly today. For those of you that I haven't gotten a chance to meet, I'm Caroline Martin Haga. I'm very uh, new at this new motherhood, um, but I am the rookie. I'm still in my rookie season. I grew up here at First Baptist and joined the church when I was nine years old. Many of you have known me since birth and have ministered to me, prayed over me, and seen me through each season of life. My husband Trevor and I had the chance to move back to Reedsville last fall, just two weeks before our little Martin was born. And I won't get too much into the details of my history today, but a main reason for that is um, for that move was the incredible influence that my family has had on my life and the way that Trevor and I want to raise our family. Also, side note, I definitely got the crying gene, so I'm doing my best today not to look too much over here. I'll never forget one Sunday before I headed back to college, Mom and I could not keep it together the whole service. I mean, the whole service we cried. And we were looking at each other, trying not to giggle, and Lance, in typical fashion, came up afterwards and was like, is everything okay? I was wondering when y'all were going to get it together. Um, and... I truly understand now the other half of the equation that really it was just a really close mother and daughter, knowing how tough it was going to be to be apart and going through a rough season. I definitely understand what it feels like now to feel like your heart is outside of your chest. It was so important to us to expose him early on to the church and to our faith, and if it weren't for RSV, we probably would have been in here sooner. The verse that always comes to mind is, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. There are so many unseen steps that it takes to get us here each Sunday, but it's a non-negotiable for our family to be here to worship together, even if it means having to listen from the back. Lance recently talked about the importance of a mother's faith and its impact on her children and the different paths that they can take. Trevor and I pray earnestly about our son's heart for Jesus and that he'll trust in the Lord's will for his life. But we also pray for our own hearts and the ways that we can be examples daily. In this season of life, we pray and ask the Lord, what am I doing intentionally right now in this moment that I can show him how to be a kingdom builder, a world changer, and a child of God? Often it's through acts of service, like giving him a bath and washing his feet, as Jesus did. Other times, it's offering a warm smile to strangers in the grocery store and saying a prayer for them in the car. Or simply showing him a glimpse of the Lord's un unconditional love through words of affirmation. But more times than not, it's demonstrating patience and grace, trying to put him down for naps when I have James 1.19 on repeat, on repeat in my mind, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. He has some serious FOMO and fear of missing out, so I don't blame him. As a new mom, there are also so many fears that can creep in when thinking about raising a little one in this age, as Mallory talked about. There are thousands of thoughts and opinions on how you should be raising your children, from food to sleep schedules to social media, education. It's hard to just keep up. The world's influence on our children is relentless. 
Part of trusting God with our children is giving them to the Lord and knowing that they are his. I often put myself in other people's shoes, and I frequently find myself wondering about their thoughts. But in particular, I find myself doing this when studying the mothers or women in the Bible. Many of them also lived in difficult times filled with uncertainty, where fear could have been abundant, but they were unwavering in their trust in the Lord's will for their children. Now, as a mom, with a mom brain myself, I would love to know Moses' mother's perspective and thoughts. From the moment she had her son, because there certainly weren't ultrasounds back in the day to know she was having a son, the decision to hide him, defying the king's order, and ultimately having to give up her three-month-old baby and placing him by the river, not having any idea what may happen to her baby, but also the unexpected blessing that was just around the corner for being able to raise her son for a while. I hope to have the same kind of crazy faith she did as a mother, and I can't even begin to describe how blessed my family is to be part of this church and to witness so many great examples of God, godly mothers and parents. Thank you so much for welcoming us back with warm, open arms, and we certainly ask you to continue to pray for us as we adjust to being new parents, that we can be the examples for our son that he called us to be, and to trust in the Lord's will for Martin's life and ours.